Hi, Jeremy Cordo in the Court of Public Opinion. I'm just on air here to let you know that we'll be live streaming the Court of Public Opinion every Friday between 9 o'clock and 12 on jeremycordo.com. Please join us. We'd love to have you. So nobody likes going to a funeral. They're obviously serious by nature. But sometimes, sometimes there's an occurrence that, you know, breaks the morbidness of it a little bit, breaks the ice. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like funerals are typically pretty morbid uh, and not like a fun thing to go to, whether it is a direct family member or if it is like just a friend. I mean, our boss, uh, the corporate fat cat, actually was telling us the other day, that he had a funeral back in COVID times and they could only have 10 people there and the interstate, like, direct family couldn't even fly over wow. for it. Uh, horrible, horrible thing. Mm, yeah, definitely. And, you know, it was weird at that time around COVID as well, especially. Did you hear about those Zoom funerals? Mm. God, and then, like, the priest would be doing the speech, it would lag a little bit. Yeah. Can't hear what the priest is saying, you know. Yeah, I well, mean, thank God we're in better times better now. Better times. But, hey, you know, those weird little occurrences kind of break the ice at funerals. And, you know, I guess there's such high stress, high sadness, that when something slightly funny happens, it really does cause an uproar in laughter. Yeah, I, I had my grandpa's funeral earlier this year year and um it was like it was pretty it was very sad there was a slideshow and everything uh, a bunch of his old friends got up and spoke yep but then when my dad got up he pretty much just did like a 10 minute comedy set and it really <laughs> lightened the mood what's the deal with the coffin <laughs> 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 that was one of his bits. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've bought these jokes online. <laughs> but uh, we unfortunately had to go to a funeral uh, uh, for one of our friend's fathers who yeah. passed away. And very sad, very good man. Yeah, very sudden as well, which was even tougher. Yeah, made horrible. It very tough. Um, you know, we haven't been to you know that many funerals, but this one was like quite sad. And going there, we were uh, on the church pews. Mm-hmm. And this thing that happened, uh, we haven't gone on air and told about it yet, but it is crazy. We're sitting in the pews, and of course, it gets to that part where you do the condolences. Yeah, yeah but pew by pew, people get up, by, like row by row, and they go down and pay their respects to the funeral, and then walk around and sit back down for yeah. the rest of the eulogy. Well, it's like a line system that yeah. you know, curves around and everything, and it gets to the point where... There's a little bit of a halt. There's mm. a little bit of a halt up front in the condolences section. Well, yeah, everyone noticed that out of nowhere, about halfway through, there was this very long, big gap. Yeah. And what had happened <laughs> was there was a elderly woman who, um, she was actually the neighbour. Yes. And she was in a mobility scooter. Mm. And so she was taking a, she was going very slowly coming up the as corridor. As you do, you wouldn't want to race in the enough. corridors. No, fair enough. So <laughs> she's gotten down a, a, eventually and gotten to pay her respects. Yes. Now, of course, on the coffin there was draped, uh, our friend's father who passed away was a massive Port Adelaide fan up yep. the power. He loved the team so much that they draped a huge Port Adelaide Football Club banner over his coffin where yeah. the flowers were. So it was a mixture of the banner and the flowers. I mean, Never Tear Us Apart played heaps. That song probably played about four or five times. Yeah, they just had it on loop. He, yeah. he loved Port so much. I think that was one of his requests, that if he were to pass away, he'd just have Port going the whole time. Yeah, he wanted the whole Port team there. Yeah, yeah he, he made a few big requests, a yeah. few big calls. <laughs> a few big calls that couldn't happen, but uh, he did love the team. And, of course, the Gophers going down, all of a sudden, she's coming down the aisle. Mm-hmm. You can hear the beeping. <laughs> she reverses into the coffin snags up the Port Adelaide banner. It gets snags, stuck in the wheel. Snags up the flowers. Then she tries to reverse out as the banner is stuck, snagged in her wheel. She's pulled <laughs> the flag kind of half off of the coffin. All the flowers on top have been coming Just off. fell off. Her son is there with her <laughs> trying to fix it all back up. Poor son. I'm so sorry about my mother. She's uh, she's completely sabotaged the, the draped orchestra of, you know, flowers and, and the banner. And she's tried to pull off. Obviously, she's looking stressed in the face as well. She's, yeah. you know, she's thinking, crap, I've really, I've really put, a, put my foot down in this funeral. And it's one of those moments where, like, yeah, it's funny, but it, it wouldn't have been very funny for her. At all. So no one's like laughing, but everyone's very obviously trying to hold in a bit of laughter as she's trying to 
back away from oh, this. It looked Adelaide like it banner. looked like someone doing a driver's test, trying to do a three point turn. Some rookie sixteen year old who can't hasn't got their license yet, trying to do a, a sophisticated move. You know, she's trying to bail out of there and get the hell out before everyone, you know, with pitchforks and uh, sticks with flames starts yeah. to go after her. What happened at the funeral, Adelaide? I mean, it didn't even stop there at that funeral. What about when the minister almost fell into the hole at yeah. the burial? I mean, I had a close call there as well because I'd played footy just that weekend uh, and I copped a massive corky. And I remember when we went to the cemetery and you'd bend down to show your respects and put some flowers on the casket as it was going down. I bent down and I was like, oh no, the corky. Like, it, my leg nearly gave way. And I was like, this could go very badly. Or well, your leg just seizes up and you can't move. And they're I like, went, wow, he really loves to show his condolences. He's I went been about, there for an hour. I went about halfway down. Unfortunately, it was a windy day. Not all the flowers made it in. <laughs> but that was a much better result, I think. We got a text here. We got a last minute bagpipe player for my grandpa's funeral. He sucked and kept hitting the wrong notes as the coffin was being lowered into the ground. Me and my cousins were cracking up while bowling was a big mess. <laughs> Jeez. It's a terrible one. What do you get him off marketplace or something? Just yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> rent a bagpiper. That, a little bit inexperienced. Yeah, it wouldn't be good. Hey, we're going to go to Glenelg. We got Andrew on the line. Andrew, what happened at the funeral? Hey, fellas. Uh, yeah. Uh... I didn't actually attend his funeral, but my cousin and my mate did. Yeah. But it turned out it was the wrong funeral. Oh, my God. They went there, yeah, for a, a, a young girl they knew. And um, they're sitting down and they noticed a, a ton of old people coming in and realised that they had the wrong funeral. Jeez. Did Absolutely they... lost it. Oh, they just started laughing, but they tried covering their faces, pretending, pretending that they were crying. So, Andrew, did they, <laughs> did they stick around for the rest of the wrong funeral? No, no, no. They, they bailed. They bailed, walking out with their hands over their face, pretending they cried. And then they had to go to the real funeral. And they said, yeah, that was sad, but uh, yeah. Man, did they did they not look at the picture that was sitting up on the coffin and think, geez, she's looking, you know, a bit like a nightmare? Yeah, I don't know. yeah, they didn't go into those details. They just told me that, yeah, they've sort of got there a bit early and all these old people running in and went, Oh man, we're not at the wrong place. We're at the wrong place. So uh, yeah, they no, said it was good. Uh, hey, thanks. everyone knew that they, were, they shouldn't have been there. But yeah, cheers, fellas. <laughs> thanks for getting involved, Andrew. We're going to go to Brooke in Mount Barker. Brooke, what happened at the funeral? Hi guys, how are you? Yeah, good. good. Um, well, this was twenty odd years ago, but my nana passed away in a nursing home on a public holiday. Yep. And so we went through. We had the whole funeral, and then we had the burial. And once they buried her, uh, put the dirt on the coffin. Then the funeral director came and said, look, we have to dig her up because she hasn't been certified as being passed away. Oh, oh my no. God. Right. I thought you were going to say, you said, like, she's got some valuable jewels in there. Let's, um, <laughs> no. let's see what we can get. <laughs> so so, they, so we had to... Sorry? Who who digged her back up? Just the groundskeepers? Groundskeepers. And yeah, took her right. back to the funeral home. And then a week later, we buried her again. So we had to send all the guests off to the wake. But my nana had a real black out of humour, so we all just had a big laugh about it. I've never heard of that. I've never heard of a double burial. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, two, so two funerals as well then? Two funerals, yeah. Hey, yeah. There you go. Not too bad. Two I mean, celebrations of life. You'd she... hope the second one was pro bono yeah. <laughs> after that <laughs> mistake. We're going to Manapara West. we got Jess on the line. Jess, what happened at the funeral? So for my grandmother's video montage, we thought we'd end it with a video of her skydiving for her 80th birthday. Yeah, wow, well, okay. Um, I didn't watch the video the whole way through, and what I didn't realise is that in the last, like, five to ten seconds of her skydiving, um, her false teeth actually fell out. Oh, <laughs> shot out. And so we were watching the video at the funeral, and then all of a sudden you just see her cheeks start to flap, and then the top <laughs> jaw of her false teeth just come flying wow. out of her mouth. Oh no! Um, I feel like and that. And then she just kind of looked like this, like really Gumby. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's uh, that's that's footage she didn't want to have played out in front of the masses. I hope it wasn't in slow mo, yeah. Jess. No, no, no. But it got it got the laugh. So that's what we were <laughs> it's got yeah. that heavy metal skydiver music in the background. <laughs> hey, we're gonna go. To Salisbury, we got Tegan on the line. Tegan, what happened at the funeral? Uh, at my grandpa's funeral, uh, everyone's having coffee afterwards, um, paying their respects to the family. And my five year old daughter, in the middle of the room, decides to lay on the floor, stick out her tongue, cross oh, her no. arms across oh, her wow. body, She's... and 
announce to everyone that she is also dead. She's done the squirrel defence. She's played dead <laughs> yeah. in the middle of the room. She did, yes. <laughs> Doing the tongue oh. out as well is uh, extra comical. Yeah. You're really you're really putting it on at that point. <laughs> did it get a good laugh, Tegan? Uh, it did, yeah. yeah. All right, that, that's good. <laughs> insane things that are happening at funerals. Yeah, you always think of them to be these sad events, but there's always something that happens, you isn't need, there? You need one jokester, right? Even yeah. if they don't realise they're the jokester at the time, someone's uh, got to liven it up a little bit. Absolutely. Hey, Matthew and your Adler, what happened at the funeral? Yeah, hey, guys, I'll try and be quick. So it was my granddad's funeral, and it was a super hot day. It was like 40 plus degrees. Jeez. And obviously a few of us were like part of the pool bearer crew, and we we put the coffin down and it was sort of starting to get lowered in, people started passing out, man. And like the first one was sort of like, well, we're concerned because, you know, it's like the day and like what's going on. But then a couple of other people passed out with like two or something, but not. And it turned out to be like, it's like winked murder, man. Like every time you're looking, someone was dropping and we're like, what is going on? Were <laughs> well, you not allowed to wear shorts to the funeral because it was so hot? Oh, sorry, guys. We're just getting out on there. I was going to say, it's a, it's a tough get to us suggest doing a Hawaiian-themed funeral, you know. Get the Hawaiian <laughs> shirts out. Get the luau. Yeah. <laughs> Here's your lay. Welcome to the funeral. <laughs> Good on you, Matthew. Hey, Caroline in Huntfield Heights, can you walk us through what happened at the funeral? Because this is insane. Hey, hey guys. Um, <laughs> once at a funeral service, when you go up and do all the tributes at the end, yeah. um, there was this elderly guy, probably about 80 years old, and he was going up to collect his tributes and his pants fell down and he could see his job. Jeez. Was he in the boxes or tidy whities No, no, he was <laughs> in the whites. In the whites. Oh, God, I thought you were going to say something else. I thought you were going to say bare <laughs> ass at the funeral. <laughs> Men no, didn't those, want to wear underwear. Those old, old man jocks. <laughs> Jeez. Was he not wearing a belt or something or what was the go? I, I don't know. It just fell down. Yeah, just parachute Didn't pants. ask questions. <laughs> Block the children's <laughs> eyes. You're listening to Dave Tom and Callum, the podcast. Tom, when someone chucks on a mascot suit, they're no longer human. No, 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 no. They go into their own realm. You immediately start to treat mascots differently, I guess. Uh, you know, you see that when you when you see like little kids go up and kick a mascot. Yeah. Yeah, it's, they, they don't yeah, see it's a human mascot. anymore. It's, nah. just, it's just a weird, bubbly little, you know... Cup, whatever it's made out of. But Something I don't know. out of a movie. That's it. But this is exactly what's happened over at Disney. So Disney obviously pride themselves on their mascots and according to them, their integrity. So when you when you go to Disney and you work there, you have to sign all these contracts to say you're going to you know uphold the integrity of Disney and Walt Disney. And yeah. You, you won't sabotage that in any sort of way. They have strict rules. This is a weirdly inspirational speech you're giving as the Disney theme plays out. <laughs> Sounds like I'm the CEO of Disney. <laughs> Walt? Talk, talking to a reincarnation of Walt, talking to a bunch of Disney interns. <laughs> this is your first day. <laughs> Got a long road ahead of you. But yes, there is a new TikTok account that's been going around that Disney has tried to shut down, but they haven't yet called Illegal Disney. Well, I wonder how Disney's going not getting their way for once. <laughs> yeah, literally. And I, I don't understand it because it's literally just a TikTok account that someone, one of the workers there who's, you know, gone undercover, I guess. They're living in the shadows and they haven't been shut down yet. They're sort of still snooping around. But pretty much they're trying to sabotage the whole message of Disney. Right. So it's like the Jafar yeah, of Disney. Literally, yeah. From Aladdin. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the person's gone around taking videos of costume heads sitting on the shelves. Right. So Disney look at this and they're like, well, that's distressing because yeah. what if kids go on TikTok and then they mm. see, you know, Mickey Mouse's decapitated head just sitting <laughs> sitting on a, a, a rack of metal. Some just sort of a trophy. Cupboard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like it's got to distress people and, you know, break the illusion a little bit. Uh, other than that, um, there's been some... There's been some kind of lewd acts being okay. filmed between mascots. Oh, uh, yep. Classic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Can you get into how lewd they are or no? I can't say how lewd they are. Right. I can't say, but it's pretty out there. I'd say an 8 out of 10. Right, okay. And you won't guess who it's between. <laughs> Because what a selection. If you're making these lewd I mean, videos to really shake up the can at Disney and make it inappropriate, like, who would you choose? Well, I mean, the obvious would be Mickey and Minnie, right? But if you're trying to sh if you're trying to rattle the cage yeah. at Disney, you're going <laughs> to, I don't know, maybe someone like, um, 
Are, are there are there animal mascots like, like Mike, Simba? Mike Wazowski and, <laughs> and Simba. Uh, Simba. <laughs> yeah. Cross yeah. animal yeah. kind of Monster. alien. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, that would be distressing to see. Who, no. Who's it between though? Uh, so the the two characters that have been getting it on in the videos are Pinocchio <laughs> and Mr. Captain Hook. <laughs> <laughs> God, I wonder what Pinocchio's doing with that nose. <laughs> I'm sure he can do a lot with that thing. <laughs> Lie again, Pinocchio. Do it. You're going to need a bigger podcast. Dave Tom and Callum, the podcast. Now, Callum, I'm going to hit you with a bit of a science question. Mm. How long do you reckon the average life expectancy of a worm is? A worm? Jeez. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm going to say a worm. Uh, four, Any number? Four years. Yeah, four years. close. Four to five years. Really? Yeah. Oh, there you yeah. go. My worm knowledge is uh, <laughs> very powerful. <laughs> took, a, took a while to answer a very simple question, but no, hey. Well, I got it right. I mean, it's a pretty well, obscure one. Look, shut up. <laughs> scientists, <laughs> scientists have awoken a frozen worm from 46,000 years ago. Crap. Right? Now, this is cool, lads, because not only is this little guy the oldest worm in the world, but he's making breakthroughs in science, right? Because they reckon after this... They could possibly unfreeze humans. Wow, well, I knew a new society would come to a time where a worm wins a Nobel Prize piece. <laughs> yeah. Look, they they're saying it's probably not gonna be for another fifty to seventy years. That's their hypothesis. Yeah. But my mind, and I'm sure a lot of people's mind, is immediately jumping to the movie Encino Man. Sure. Uh Brendan Fraser. Yeah, he plays a, uh, a, a prehistoric man who's trapped in ice and then he unthaws in a teenager's backyard. He goes to high school. It's all a bit of fun. But if you do some digging on that movie, do you know who produced it? No. This company. Disney produced it? Disney okay. produced Encino Man. Now now we're rolling with something. You know, it is like human fascination, right, to look at what an animal can do. Can we unfreeze an animal? And then you immediately think... Can we do it to a human? Yeah. Now, I don't want to be too much of a conspiracy right now, but earlier we were speaking about this. There is a new TikTok account that's been going around that Disney has tried to shut down, but they haven't yet, called Illegal Disney. They're trying to sabotage the whole message of Disney. Now, look, for all we know, I think these scientists could be under Disney control. Mm. Whereas we know Disney own everything. Right? Pretty well, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a big company. I wouldn't say everything, but yeah, it's, it's big. They own, like, everything, right? And who knows what they actually own behind the scenes? Yeah. You know? And I'm thinking maybe they are the ones behind this unfreezing worm technology to then use on humans. Because as we all know, Walt Disney froze his head... After he passed. Well, I don't think he was passed yet. That's the thing. Well, yeah, I think he chose, you know, before his expected death that he was like, mm. hey, let's do the frozen thing. Freeze me, and then crack. I want to be unfrozen in years. And it comes to no surprise, when we were talking about earlier with the Disney stuff, they are being uh, quite lewd with the Disney mascots, the staff there, doing things like... So the, the two characters that have been getting it on in the videos are Pinocchio <laughs> and Mr. Captain Hook. <laughs> <laughs> God, I wonder what Pinocchio's doing with that nose. <laughs> I'm sure he can do a lot with that thing. <laughs> Lie again, Pinocchio. Do it. Still now, proud of that joke. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good one. I think they're trying to reawaken Walt Disney to shut down this TikTok account. <laughs> And I don't know, something just doesn't add up. I mean, we, we, we're we considering worms are waking up. Walt Disney, he's a bit of a worm. He's yeah. going to wake up soon. So you're saying that the management of Disney right now are thinking, crap, all of our mascots are being really lewd. They're putting up these bad videos. We need to get the big boss back. We yeah. need him back in action. Let's do the unfreezing. <laughs> let's let's put him back in the in the corporate fat cat chair at uh, Disney. And end this TikTok account <laughs> once and for all. We're on to you, Disney. Hi, Jeremy Cordo in the Court of Public Opinion. I'm just on air here to let you know that we'll be live streaming the Court of Public Opinion every Friday between 9 o'clock and 12 on jeremycordo.com. Please join us. We'd love to have you.